I don't recommend citing Russian officials and media outlets in European media because they use every opportunity to spread the Kremlin propaganda and you don't receive information but communication from their side. When we are dealing with a manipulator, we should think as if we were dealing with a terrorist because uh, propagandists, uh, they behave like terrorists. Hello and welcome to Ukraine in Flames, a special project by Ukraine Media Center and NGO Euro-Atlantic course. I'm your host, Varvara Shmugalova. In today's episode, we'd like to continue our recurrent topic of shedding light on Russian propaganda manipulations. In particular, today our expert will talk about the fakes targeted at the audience in European Union and United States of America. The hybrid warfare is a significant element of Russian war, and Ukraine is successfully fighting it with truth and winning on this field as well. If you want to find out more about this subject, please continue watching this video and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss our videos in the future. Please welcome Alexander Zamkoy from Stop Fake. To provide you with some context, Stop Fake website is a project of NGO Media Reform Center. It is an educational platform founded by Mohilic School of Journalism at National University of Kyiv Mohila Academy, which aims to implement high standards of journalism education in Ukraine, raise the level of media literacy, and inform about dangers of propaganda and dissemination of fake information in the media. Since the start of the full-scale war, Stop Fake has debunked more than 500 Kremlin fakes aimed at Ukrainians, the military and the international community audiences. Of course, Russian propaganda is mainly concerned with discouraging Ukraine and justifying its invasion. But the recent analysis we made in Stop Fake based on the fake news debunked since February shows the biggest number of fakes were related to the topic of Europe and the United States nearly 15% of all fakes. These are the false narratives about the West stop supporting Ukraine or the grain deal which allegedly devastates Ukraine and enriches European Union. There were fakes about the fatigue from Ukrainian refugees, uh, the existence of censorship in the European media, uh, the attempts to quarrel the United States and the European Union. In general, Russian narratives have hardly changed after the full-scale invasion. These are the same messages about the Ukraine as a failed state, the, the uh, attempts to discredit, discredit the Ukrainian armed forces, the government and local authorities. There were stories about the Nazis in Ukraine, about Ukraine as a terrorist state, and the uh, so-called illegitimate Kyiv junta. They try to spread cultural and historical myths about the oppression of Russian speakers and Ukraine as a part of Russia, historical part of Russia. So these are the still top five narratives out of 18 that we at Stopek are currently tracking in Russian media. But of course, the Great War also made its adjustments, which is why we also see fakes in our info space trying to demoralize Ukrainians. These included messages about the fake losses of the armed forces on the front line, the uh, stories about the American land lease as a future burden for uh, Ukrainian generations. Uh, Kremlin tries to distort Western media statements about problems in the Ukrainian army, about refugees, and they also try to demoralize Ukrainian population with uh, Russia's energy terror and possible and uh, mentions about the possible territorial concessions from Ukraine. Well, fakes about Ukrainian staged videos from Bucha, Izium, Kherson and other, uh, other liberated territories are also widely circulated. Russian propaganda even claims that all this is done under the cover of European governments and the mainstream media. Uh, which prefer not to notice this. During this time, Stop Fake exposed new pro Kremlin propagandists who try to prove to the international audience that Ukraine is killing its own population and shooting itself. For one of the examples might be the uh, Frenchman Adrian Bouquet, who claimed that he saw with his own eyes how Ukrainian Nazis shot fake videos in Bucha. 
while he never revealed any evidence and stopped fake proof he has never been there. Fakes about the economic and energy crisis in the West, Russian fake victories, US biological laboratories in Ukraine, dirty bombs and nuclear weapons and other stuff also occupy a significant part of our rating. While also in general, we need to say that Russian state officials, diplomacy and soft power, media propagandists and war reporters, European Union puppet organizations and politicians also fed by Russia, uh, influencers and experts and the social media in general also might be the official and hidden sources of, pro of, of criminal propaganda. Russia has spent over 300 million US dollars on influencing foreign elections since 2014. And for example, that this summer, Meta Corporation discovered more than 60 fake websites that pretended to be traditional European media. We need to be aware that pro Kremlin propaganda is still running very smoothly. Numerous fake accounts on social media advertised and distributed links to bogus sites. And this is just the latest case, one of the cases. Of course, in the long run, things that will bring us closer to resilience towards any propaganda and disinformation are connected to the need to raise media literacy and critical thinking. This comes together with education, the role of media and society, and personal responsibility for the content each individual consumes and shares. But as a general recommendation, I would say that I don't recommend citing Russian officials and media outlets in European media because they use every opportunity to spread pro Kremlin propaganda and you don't receive information but communication from their side. So there is no longer, there is not, not a question of balance of thoughts or, or being biased or not. When you give uh, Russian sources uh, the possibility to speak, you, you deliberately spread Ukrainian propaganda, give them a chance to, uh, to use European media and to use all the means of democracy to uh, get to the people's minds in Europe. Russian propaganda must be blocked and have to uh, have no means to communicate with Europeans because it also relies on polarizing societies corrupting institutions and bringing populists to power. We need to keep doing the fact-checking job and prioritize the support of independent media with an accent on civic journalism. As people are less likely to trust state officials and media broadcasters, I think there should be an army of public activists willing to fight an information war. Following, please hear from Titana Matichak expert in countering propaganda and manipulation. She will name and debunk the main fakes that Russia used in its hybrid warfare this year. Lately, Kremlin has been using several key manipulative messages for the European and American audience against its war with Ukraine. The first message is that Ukraine is a miserable enemy. Ukraine is a failed state and Russia supposedly is a winner and Russia will win this war. Yes, Ukraine is a victim in this war because Russia started this war, but Ukraine is a strong enemy. Ukraine has its strong army and 50 partners help Ukraine to fight. 50 countries are partners of Ukraine in this war, and Ukraine can win this war. The second message is that if Ukraine doesn't surrender to Russia, Russia can use its nuclear weapons on the territory of Ukraine. That's not true, because Russia cannot use its nuclear weapons just because Ukraine uh, doesn't want to give to it uh, its territories. It's prohibited. Russia can use its nuclear weapons only in a case if somebody 
invades its territory, but nobody invades Russia. Ukraine is not going to invade Russia. That is why Russia cannot use its nuclear weapons in Ukraine. The third key manipulative message is uh, that if uh, Russia uh, uses nuclear weapons on the territory of Ukraine, the nuclear war will start and Ukraine will be responsible for this war. Now, that is not true. It is a manipulation because even if Russia violates the international law and uses its nuclear weapons in Ukraine, the other nuclear powers won't use their nuclear weapons. Uh, they can try to stop Russia uh, in its aggressive position, but uh, they emphasized that they would not use its nuclear weapons against Russia or against other countries. So the nuclear war won't start. And Ukraine cannot be responsible for uh, Russian position uh, in this war and for the Russian decision to use nuclear weapons because Ukraine didn't invade Russia. The fourth manipulative message is that uh, Russia is losing uh, the informational war with Ukraine because Ukraine has supposedly has a huge propaganda machine in this country. Uh, well, yes, Russia is losing the informational war, which Russia itself started, but Ukraine doesn't have a big propaganda machine. Ukraine fights with facts and Ukraine fights with truth. That is why Ukraine is winning in this informational war. And the Western countries help Ukraine to tell the truth uh, to the whole world because uh, Ukraine invited uh, all the international journalists who wanted to come to Ukraine and to tell the truth to the whole world. That is why all the international journalists in Ukraine tell the truth to the whole world. And when the world see the truth, see the facts, Ukraine is winning because everyone who fights with truth will be the winner. Another manipulative message is that Ukraine is responsible for the energy crisis in Europe. No, that's not true because the energy crisis was created by Russia itself. Uh, Kremlin decided not to sell uh, uh, gas to the European countries. And uh, when uh, European countries uh, introduced several sanctions uh, on the Russian petroleum and Russian oil, uh, Russia couldn't sell uh, the oil and the petroleum uh, on a high price. But Ukraine uh, is not responsible for this crisis because the European countries decided uh, to provide all those sanctions to Russia uh, to make this country weak and uh, to make it so weak that it couldn't in invade any European countries because the whole world uh, now can see that uh, if Russia invaded Ukraine and if Russia uh, doesn't, um, doesn't understand that uh, it can be punished for this, uh, Russia can invade other countries and uh, the European society and the American society want 
to stop Russia from invading other countries, uh, to save the peace in the world. Uh, another manipulative message is that Ukraine is responsible for the food crisis in Europe and in other countries of the world. That's a manipulation because uh, Russia invaded Ukraine and Russia occupied some territories of Ukraine on which uh, there was a lot of food. That is why uh, it was very difficult to, uh, to take this food from the occupied territories and to sell it to the other countries. That is why uh, it was Russia who was responsible for creating this food crisis. So what can we do? When we are dealing with a manipulator, we should think as if we were dealing with a terrorist. Because uh, propagandists, uh, they behave like terrorists. And first, we should stop uh, translating, we should stop uh, providing the information from the Russian media to the European and to the American societies. Uh, Russian media sometimes uh, give their information not in Russian, but in other languages. So we shouldn't give the floor to the propagandists, to the Kremlin propagandists, on our TV channels, both in Ukraine and in Europe. And the second thing that we should do is to continue fighting with truth. So we should provide as many facts and as many truths as we can uh, to show what is true and what is false and what is manipulation. So European and American experts and authorities should go to the TV studios, uh, should um, give the explanations to the journalists and to the bloggers and to explain who is responsible for those crises in Europe uh, which were created by Russia. That is not Ukraine who is responsible, but that is Russia. You've been watching a special project by Ukraine Media Center and Euro-Atlantic course dedicated to the Russian-Ukrainian war. Ukraine in Flames. In the description under this video, you can find information on how you can help Ukraine fight Russian aggression. If you find our work useful, please like and share this video. Slava Ukraini!